Hello again, it's Ombra, the uh, Winds Lodge Prefect at the Gray School of Wizardry. Today I thought uh, I'd talk a little bit more about our Flat Headmaster Challenge, and um, that's something that uh, Winds Lodge members can, um, can earn uh, merits for, but the rest of the school is certainly invited to participate. Uh, we had a um, an image of the uh, the headmaster that you could cut out, post to on cardboard, and, and take with you on your travels. And Winds Lodge members, you get a, a merit for um, sharing your your photos with us. But there's an additional merit that can be earned if you tell us something of magical significance about the place you visited, a magical experience you had there, or any opportunity that you've had to uh, share with other people who the headmaster is and uh, you know what our school is about. So in the interest of setting a good example, I thought I would talk a little bit about the magical adventures that I had uh, with the flat headmaster traveling across the country. So we, we took this rather long road trip. Um, I can't read my papers with my glasses on. Uh, so we traveled through many states, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, Texas, Arkansas, Tennessee, Virginia, Maryland. And it was really interesting as I was traveling through those places, I had a, a few of you kind of give shout outs of you were near me. So yes, uh, Azun Willis Spire, I was, I was near you. Richard Crow, I was near you. I think I was pretty close to our uh, Stones Lodge Prefect too. Hi, Jim. Um, so in all those states, I, I imagine I passed uh, by quite a few of you. And one of the things I have mentioned previously is that any area that has an apprentice wizard in it is by default a magical place. So I'll, if I've named your home state, it's, it's, a, it's a magical place. So, um, so another thing, you know, I talked about magical experience that you have while traveling. Well, one of the, the things that um, I did is when we're going through the, the, the flatter states, uh, <laughs> um, I'm sure they're very nice places, Missouri and Kansas, but we really wanted to get out west. So those were big travel days, 13 hours in the car. So I passed the time. Fortunately, I was a passenger. I wouldn't do this if I were driving. I, um, I studied, um, uh, you know, in, in the long drive. I did, I brought a lot of reading with me. Um, I made the mistake of, I thought it would be easier to, to read stuff on Kindle. So I, I had purchased some books on, on Kindle. And as I'm, as I'm, I'm reading, it occurs to me that I want to take notes. <laughs> so now I'm reading and writing in the car and I had my, my magical journal with me and I managed to use up all the pages in it. Just so when you're in the car for 13 hours reading and writing, and I was able to do that without getting motion sick. Once we got to our destination, I, I stepped out of the car and all of a sudden I was like, whoa, and it's like, well, like, it makes sense that you are motion sick while in motion. I got motion sick when I was stationary. And I guess that's a thing, sea legs. You get used to moving and as soon as you're not, it's like, I didn't know that was a thing, so, you know, I had to go, you know, make that late night trip for emotion sickness medication for, for when I was standing still. But, uh, so, let's see, where, are, where did I go through that was magical? Uh, Kansas, you know, Kansas is, you know, this is where, um, you know, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, and I think there's even a museum, uh, an Oz museum there, we didn't stop there. And, uh, so some people might say, but the, but the Wizard of Oz, he wasn't a, a real wizard. And I'm thinking, wasn't he? Because, you know, glamoury, uh, that is, uh, you know, a part of magic. You know, it's like, don't look at the man behind the curtain. You know, that's, you know, isn't that what our stage mus uh, magicians do with sleight of hand? You know, it's, it's a big part of the performance. So I, I think he does kind of uh, qualify at least a bit as far as being a wizard. So then we arrived at uh, Rocky Mountains, and mountains, just in general, they are uh, considered a, a portal of, of sorts. You know, I, I took a, a class here, uh, the Un Uncommon Magical Pests 401, that's level four in the D Department of Dark Arts, where one of the lessons was on portals. And these are, are places where there tends to be, you know, a, a lot more... Um, sort of supernatural phenomena, places you might see more uh, UFOs, uh, encounters with um, otherworldly beings, Bigfoot. 
so mountains are one of the places where those kinds of things are um, are reported. And one of the things, and I, I read about this, and and I want to to mention to um, where I have researched uh, some of this material, I will um, issue a list of citations in the in the notes um, that that accompany this video. That's a you know very important. Uh, Thing that we we emphasize in the school is citing your you know your resources so one of the things that that i um, read about when i was researching portals that in a lot of these places uh, mountains in particular you can suffer the effects of high altitude um, with like lower oxygen levels um, and and things that um, that kind of alter your perceptions are going to affect what kind of experiences you have there and so some people might say, well, is that causing you to hallucinate? Is that, uh, does that make the experiences less real somehow? But I, I kind of wondered what if those altered states made us more aware of things that are there? You know, there, I don't know that there's a, a way to prove that one way or another. It's like, how much can we, we rely on our perceptions to tell us the truth about the world? And you know, so that that's something I wonder about. And um, so, like, what I read is, like, people um, experiencing altitude sickness, they can have powerful emotions, uh, particularly fear. But, you know, I, I had my daughter experience that. I think she was was, was experiencing uh, was altitude sickness, and you get the, the headache, and you can't breathe, and that, that will in induce fear, I think. But people talk about... Uh, uh, seeing lights, uh, having out-of-body um, experiences. So or we're seeing Bigfoot. Bigfoot is a big thing out there. Um, we saw lots of souvenirs that have Bigfoot on them. Um, I don't think we have any classes on, on Bigfoot in, in the Gray School uh, yet. Hopefully, I, I would like to see some. So Professor Lyris, I think you, Bigfoot is your thing. You're the, the beast mastery, uh, you know, professor. Uh, um, I would, yeah, you know, I would really like to, you know, read about Bigfoot. I'm a, I'm a dark arts major. I'm into the defensive stuff. I want to know how would I defend myself, uh, you know, against Bigfoot, because I would really, I'd like to do some hiking out in the in the Northwest, and I don't know how likely it would be, but you know, I believe in the Boy Scout motto is be prepared, and I really don't want my last words to be, I should have prepared for a Bigfoot attack. Because if I was being attacked by Bigfoot, I would calmly say that. Sure. So, and here's another idea I had, uh, Professor Lyris, if, if you are watching. Um, Gray School Conclave Bigfoot Hunt. I am totally there. I don't know how I would convince my husband that, you know, spend the money. I'm going out to hunt for Bigfoot. This is, a, you know, a reasonable uh, ex expenditure. I don't know. I would be totally down for it, though. I think that would be really cool. So one of my next destinations was Arches National Park, and there are many legends associated with Arches. And I only found one of them, <laughs> but there, there are a, a lot. So um, there's a, a rainbow bridge is, is um, one of the one of the arches there. And for centuries, the, the Native Americans uh, um, who piloted the stone bridge, considered it a, a gate for connecting the earth and the sky. And one of this, this again goes to this idea of portals and, and openings, but one of the things I had read about in some of the, um, some of the more metaphysical books about um, any doorway being, um, you know, being a portal and traveling from one state of being to the next. And this is why when you walk into into a room you forget why you know why did i come in here it's because you passed through a portal and looking up a citation for this i found um there's there's actual um psych psychological research behind this there's a, a professor gabriel radvansky uh talked about passing through doors being an event boundary and that is psychologically that causes you to forget why you went into another room so so you know again some scientific uh you know studies behind that i also want to point out if you're interested in arches we have a class natural wonders 502 arches and natural bridges it is level five class in the department of natural philosophy 
So one of the next places we went, I can't cover every place we went because we went to a lot of them. Uh, Sedona, uh, Sedona, Arizona. Maybe you've heard of it. It is um, so well known for being a vortex, which is uh, like a an area of really concentrated energy. It's also considered a portal. Um, uh, certain things that are associated with um, with uh, vortexes are healing properties, um, heightened mystical spiritual experiences, and just just being there. There's lots of new age stores, and um, when I talked about you know. Uh, having the opportunity to talk about our headmaster and our school with people, it actually wasn't my my uh, flat headmaster image that uh, sparked attention. It, it was my gray school ring. You can see my gray school ring, and some of the, the women in the new age store were like, "Ooh, I love that!" So that was uh, you know a way to spark that conversation. So that you know, so that was a a pretty magical experience. Also, just. Uh, myself and a couple members of my family hiked Cathedral Rock, and I, you know, I, I just found that a, a pretty spiritual experience. A really, you know, you really get this this rush just going up there, climbing up there, feeling like you're on top of the world. And also, it's like a bit of an accomplishment because there's some places on there that are kind of scary trying to get up, but it, it was uh, definitely well worth it. If you're ever in Sedona, I highly recommend it. Uh, Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> um, so you've probably heard of that one. There was an alleged uh, crash of a UFO that was discovered by a rancher, and the initial uh, press release at the time said the military was in possession of a flying saucer. Uh, so, and then the next day, a correction occurred that says, no, no, it, it was a weather balloon. So there's you know a lot of conspiracy theories associated with that. So I was thinking, you know, maybe New Mexico, was, you know, there's a, a museum there for, uh, you know, UFO sightings. Maybe this is a place where a lot of sightings occur. Um, that apparently uh, New Mexico is only either number seven or number eight in terms of states with the most UFO sightings. So it's, it's up there, you know, number seven, number eight. The um, the most uh, the places with the most UFO sightings are Vermont, Oregon, Maine, Washington, New Hampshire, Arizona, um, New Mexico. So most of those, the, the top five of those are, are northern states. But to me, Arizona, New Mexico, that, that makes sense to me. You, you know, you have this this place where this alleged crash occurred and Arizona has Sedona. There's a lot of. Um, a lot of reports of, of UFOs in that area as well. Again, because it could be a portal. Is that a magical place that's, you know, opened up for things to come through? That's one theory. Or is it the altered states of consciousness that we are, are more aware of these things? You know, is it a product of our imagination or is it real? So leave that up to you to, uh, you know, speculate on that yourself. And I, you know, I also read that the... Um, that UFO sightings are more commonly uh, seen in the summer. And one person actually uh, jokingly said, maybe it, it's just because extraterrestrials, they like to go on summer vacation with their kids too. And I'm like, yeah, of course, because the seasons on other planets correspond to the seasons in the Northern hemisphere of Earth. So I said, you know, New Mexico is either either number seven or number eight on the, the frequency of, of UFOs. And I, I found this kind of interesting because one article cited that and the, the next article cited the um, other. Th this is interesting. Um, the first article I read that said they were number seven was on June 19th, 2019. The second that gave them as number eight was um, July 2nd, 2019. So there's only a space of a couple of weeks there, and they were both published by USA Today. Now, why would USA Today be so interested in UFO sightings that they reported on it twice in two weeks? The truth is out there. That's all I can say. Let, let you uh, draw your own conclusions from that. Um, so, yeah, so the, the number one state was Vermont. Number two is, is Oregon. Is that Oregon? 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 People from, from Oregon are, are weird. They don't even know how to pronounce their own state. This is where I find out who's listening. We have a lot of Grace School people in the Oregon, Oregon the, uh, Northwest. So, so, um, 
so then we were travel. We, you know, we were traveling through the desert, uh, traveling through New Mexico, obviously, to get to Roswell. Um, and the the desert itself is a place where people have a lot of mystical experiences. They um, they experience a lot of you know altered states of consciousness that could be easily attributed to isolation, the harshness of an environment, the extreme heat. Um, some people, uh, well, like Native Americans, have you know intentionally gone on on vision quests. They uh, you know included things like sleep, sleep deprivation, fasting. Um, the uh, author of the um, the piece that I read, and that was, um, I, I can't find it right now. Oh, I have my list of references right here. This was uh, this was Psychology Today. Um, this was uh, uh, Dr. John Klein, who, who uh, wrote this article about mystic experiences in the desert, said he had a friend who was, was in the desert, felt like she was dying, and then she encountered these, these helpful spirits. So... Again, is it is it real? Is it at our imagination? Um, I would like to point out uh, um, a couple of classes that we have uh, re related to this in the Gray School. Um, as far as um, using some of these extreme methods like uh, like sleep deprivation, extreme heat, like dehydration, um, I wouldn't recommend going on a vision quest unless that is your um, your heritage because that's you know cultural appropriation, but just uh, mystic mystics of um, you know across the ages and all cultures have um, you know they they've realized that using some of these extremes helps to induce like you know these these mystical experiences and we have a class uh, chaos magic in the department of magical practice it's a, a level three uh, a class uh, the requirements uh, are your core energy practices, which by the time you uh, you get to level three, I you should have completed. And uh, part of the chaos magic is you know involves achieving a, a state of gnosis, and that can incorporate a lot of these you know extreme measures. So that that I found that to be a very interesting class. I, I did take that one. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, so where else did I visit? Carlsbad Caverns, very nice. Uh, it's huge. So I highly recommend it if you ever get down to that area. Caves are, you know, considered another portal, just just entering into the cave. Uh, that's a portal. And it's it's kind of interesting. Every every cave that I have ever um, been in, every every tour to explore a cave, they always do this thing where they shut off all the lights, <clears throat> excuse me, to let you experience how dark that is for these people who were initially exploring these ca caves with nothing but, but candlelight. What would they have experienced if that light went out and is your like absolute darkness? So I would imagine that that uh, sensory deprivation in, in a cave could also induce some pretty mystical experiences. And I would like to point out that we have um, a, a class exploring the sacred magical landscape. It's uh, level two class in the Department of Natural Philosophy that covers mountains, caves, deserts, forests, and, and much more. We also have um, in the same department, Natural Wonders 503, Caves and, and Caverns. That's a, a level five class. So if you're interested in finding out, you know, and any more about, you know, the magical significance of any of these places, we have a lot of classes that, that cover that. So I, you know, I hope you will if you're interested, explore that uh, further. So that's the summary of my travels, such as it is. And a couple other things I, I wanted to discuss as, as far as, um, um, as challenges. I've been thinking about some more merit challenges. And I had mentioned this a little bit in my last video. I was experimenting um, with this idea that uh, I've seen some other people do where they, they paint rocks and they, I've seen them called kindness rocks. You have a, you know, a nice message and then um, the, the flip side, maybe you have a, you know, a, a website you can post your pictures. I was thinking, could we use something like this to promote a, a grade school? And I'm not terribly artistic, but I, I was working with this. Now, acrylic paint is supposed to be waterproof and I use some uh, I guess, uh, I guess oil-based um, Sharpie pens because also waterproof. So, you know, the, um, 
the school motto, everything is alive. I have everything is alive. I also have everything is interconnected somewhere. Everything is, so yeah, my, my artistic skills, not, not great. Then, you know, gray school. So yeah, not, not all who wander are lost. Um, excuse me for a second. My camera just moved. Uh, believe in magic. I know is silly i'm sure you can come up with much better ones and one thing i will i will post is there is a list of like etiquette to follow so yeah i use shells instead of rocks because i don't thought that might be neat or or not i don't know they're they're harder to draw on because of the the ridges so that might be a good reason to uh, to use rocks but you know use your imagination but there's like an etiquette like don't put rocks in you know places where people mow or, you know, on property where people might not want that. But if you do that, if you, you know, post your, your pictures, uh, I will create a, a thread in the forums and you can earn a merit for that. I'm also trying to think of a, another merit because I'm allowed to um, offer up to four merits per, per month. And I like to um, come up with merits that don't really require a, a whole lot of research. Now, the, the, the magical, you know, experiences. You might have to do some research, like I, I did some research, but it could just be the magical experience you had there. Because we do so much studying for our classes, and I don't want to take time away from your classes. And I know how important that is if you have limited amount of time, and you know, you could be devoting that to the studies if you're spending a lot of time on merits. Not helpful. So I want something more more fun, magical experiences that you can have that are fun. So hopefully the, the flathead master is fun. Hopefully the the rocks, the seashells, whatever is is fun. You know, trying to think of something something else. And I had this this idea, you know, they say the eyes are the windows of the soul. That's not true. I think that what is on your bookshelf is the window of your soul because, you know, I see pictures of people and they got their bookshelf in the background. I will enlarge that picture to see what they are, are reading because and then judge them for it totally. <laughs> and does anyone else do that? Because I, 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 I know people who, who do that. It is very interesting to see what's on people's bookshelf. So if you could, um, I will create, a, again, a, a thread if you show me a picture of what's on your bookshelf. Now, in my case, I literally have over 2,000 books, so I might have to, you know, pick a few. If you don't want to take a, a photograph, list 10, 20 books, and one paragraph uh, explaining why you why you have what you have, what, where you are on your spiritual journey. Um, You know, they say you can't judge a book by its cover, but you can totally judge a person by what they read. Is that true? Is it not? You know, um, you know, supply supply a, a paragraph because you know if if you have silver raven wolf up there next to E. A. Coetting, I have questions. There's a story there. I may or may not have both of those authors. Uh, so, and then for for next month, um, I'm kind of playing around with this idea. I haven't quite figured out. Um, so I'm asking for some feedback on this. Any any ideas? Like I said, I, I try to come up with things that are more fun, not so much study oriented because there's plenty of studying to be done in this school. Please, please uh, concentrate on your studies. I don't want the merits to be a stressful thing. It should be a fun thing to, you know, in, you know, increase your, your social interaction uh, with, with the school. But I was thinking something along the line of a scavenger hunt, but I haven't figured out what should you be hunting for? You know, I could say, you know, find things in nature like find a seashell, but if you live in Utah, that, that might be a problem. Or I could say find a feather. In a lot of cases, that's okay, but there's some birds you shouldn't be, you know, laws, laws vary. So, and another thing I've done with like church youth is um, have, you don't actually obtain the items, you take pictures of, of the items. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out a fun way of doing that. If you have some, some ideas, I, I would love to hear them. So let's see, this, this recording is already almost 25 minutes long, and I'm sure you're getting tired of listening to me. So until next time, what Professor Kingsley would say, a very blessed be.